Welcome to the Dre Way. I'm glad you're here. We got a complete show for you today, so let's get started. Now, a lot of people have been asking me about this, and I mean a lot of you ask, and I, I wasn't really aware that a lot of you don't do this, but this is my, right here, this is my holiday tree because I started this back in the 90s. I mean, I like I like the tree. I like the lights. I like everything about it. So after Christmas, I just kept the tree up and started to dress the tree all year round. Uh, I dress it for Valentine's Day, for Easter, for St. Patty's Day, uh, for, as you can see, this is the Mother's Day tree, and I'm going to give you some close-ups because I have no idea really how to edit and stuff. It may be a little choppy, <laughs> but I'm going to do the best I can. So right now, I'll just kind of get out of the way a little bit, but this is my Mother's Day tree. You can see me right there with my grandmother, and there's pictures of me with my mother. There's pic You'll see what I'm talking about, but it just makes... It makes sense to me because I enjoy the tree year round to just turn it into a holiday tree and just change it around and do different things with it. I can remember the, the, the first time I did a Halloween tree. Oh my gosh. I mean, I mean, even now neighbors come over to the house and they're like, we got to see, we got to see this tree. We got to see this, this Halloween tree. And you would be surprised when people see it. I got to do that next year. I got to do that next year. Or they'll see, wait till you see, wait till you see my son's birthday tree. Yeah, you're going to, you're in August, my, my son's birthday in August, my son's going to be eight years old. So yeah, I'm going to do a special, I, I do it every year. So I'm going to do a special tree for him turning eight and you'll get a chance to see it. Like I said, right now, this is the mother's day tree. A lot of you saw the St. Patty tree and the Easter tree and stuff like that. So as time goes on, you're going to get, get a chance to see each and every tree. But the, there's something special about the Mother's Day tree. And when I say there's something special about it, um, the two most influential people in my life has been my mother and my grandmother. Of course, my grandmother has passed away and my mother is 83 years old. But my mother and I have been like this all our lives. Um, I, I've told the story before, and I and I I have trouble telling the story. So if I if I choke up, you'll you'll understand. My first real memory of my mother was when I was I had asthma as a young boy, and I don't know if you've had asthma or have family members that have had asthma, especially when you're a little boy. Um, I can tell you right now, there is nothing more scary than not being able to take a breath. Um, especially when you're a young boy, you, you, you know, it, it, you just don't know what to do. I had asthma attacks as a young boy and had to stay in a vaporized room often. And I can remember that I had a particular attack and I had to go to the hospital. And I remember coming home from the hospital and, and I was young. I'm talking about I couldn't have been more than two and a half, three years old. And it's my first real memory of my mother because when I would get scared at night, she would come in and scratch my back. So, you know, with her nails and stuff, you know, and, uh, I was petrified this night because I had just had an attack and I was like, what if I have an attack when I'm sleeping? You know, what then? So my mother came in and scratched my back to try to put me asleep. And all of a sudden it stopped. I was almost asleep. Then all of a sudden it stopped. She stopped scratching my back. And I looked over to see where she was. And here she was down on the floor with a blanket and a pillow. She was sleeping on the floor to make sure I slept and felt secure. So that's my, that's my first time, my first real memory of my mother. And, uh, this, you know, when you stop back and, and think about the sacrifices all our mothers have made, 
it just makes sense to do a tree and, and show them appreciation. So that's kind of the reason why I do it. Um, like I said, uh, I'll show you some close-ups of the actual pictures and stuff like that, but this is the Mother's Day tree. Um, you'll see the other trees as we go along, but there it is. There's the holiday tree. I hope you guys, uh, I hope you guys enjoy it. Been in the news, and we just simply have to talk about it because it's one of the things that has bo really bothered me over the years, and that is real estate commissions. Real estate commissions have really bothered me because it really takes advantage of home sellers. I've never had someone really describe to me why a home seller selling a $700,000 home has to pay $42,000 just to sell the house. It, it, it makes no sense. And the worst part about it is trying to understand how a real estate agent comes in your house and says, yeah, I'll help you sell it, but I want 6% of your house. Yeah, 6% of the value. I want it. Just say that out loud. Just stop for a minute and, and, and think about somebody wanting 6% of your house just to walk in and sell it. You don't even know this person in most cases. And they're asking for 6% of your house's value just to simply sell it. I think that is crazy. I think it's total nonsense. You can't explain to me why I can't sell a $700,000 house for a few thousand bucks. Please explain to me why it costs more than a few thousand dollars to sell my $700,000 house. It shouldn't. And, it, and if I have to give anything to a, to a buyer, the only thing I'm going to give him is help with his closing cost. That's it. I shouldn't have to give anyone. If I have a nice home, why should I have to give a, a buyer anything more than perhaps deciding to pay closing costs? It doesn't make any sense whatsoever. Now, this is what currently happens. This is what's going on right now. And I want you to understand it went to a court of law. That's why just the other day, just yesterday, uh, uh, Friday, the Depart Department of Justice said, hey, wait a minute, we're reopening our investigation into these commissions from real estate agents. Because real estate agents are all over the internet saying, oh, don't worry, we have a settlement, you know, uh, we're going to settle the, this case and we're just going to go about doing our business pretty much the same way. Yeah, they're actually saying that. Even though in court, they were found liable, liable for colluding, and keeping commissions artificially high. Yeah. A jury found them liable in about two hours. That's all it took. So why is this a big deal? Why should you care? Because you know, as a homeowner, do you really want to give someone 6% of your home's value just to simply sell your house? It doesn't make any sense, and it doesn't make any sense to the Department of Justice. Because the Department of Justice wants... Hey, if you're working, bill yourself hourly because this commission stuff is nonsense. Think about this. Think about a real estate agent coming to you and saying, hey, I want you to give a bag of money to a real estate agent you don't know that you didn't hire. And yeah, I want you to give them a bag of money. In this case, we're selling your $700,000 house. I want to give the person working against you $21,000. Oh, but they're bringing a buyer. Buyers are coming anyway because your house is for sale. The fact that they have a salesman tagged along doesn't mean you should be offering a big bag of money, but the listing agent wants you to do that because they don't do anything. They're not selling your house. They just admit and they're not selling it. They're offering a bag of money. Why, you could do that, couldn't you? Couldn't you offer a bag of money at the front door and say, hey, if you, find, if you have a buyer, hey, buyer, come... I got a bag of money for you. Come collect it. That doesn't take a genius, does it? But I, this, is, this is the problem I have with the entire system and I have for years. And this is why I believe you have no business hiring a real estate agent for any reason. They're, they're completely not necessary. Unless your house is $5 million and, or more, 
and you're paying because an agent knows a group of people that are wealthy and can afford that type of home, unless you have that circumstance, yeah, you don't need a real estate agent for any reason. And especially with AI coming, you really don't need a real estate agent for any reason. You can learn to do it yourself. You can follow along with me and I will show you step by step by step how to do it. I know we're only on episode two and we have a lot of things to cover, a lot of things to talk about, but I, I want you to know that yes, I am going to talk about real estate. I'm going to talk about real estate commissions, not all the time. When, when, the very next subject I'm going to talk about, you're going to be like, why is he talking about that? <laughs> but this is the dry way. This is my, this is my show. I can really talk about anything I want to, but I wanted to talk about this because it just it bothers me. It bothers me that home sellers are getting ripped off. Home sellers that are selling right now, if you're selling a house right now and you have one of these listing agreements, you're getting ripped off right now. Hate to break it to you, but you are. There is no reason that you can't hire a real estate agent if you must at a flat fee. There's plenty of them out there. You don't want to be handing over percentages of your home percentages of your home. And if you think it's okay, say it out loud to yourself. Uh, yeah, to this person I barely know, I'm going to hand a hand out percentages of my home. Yeah, that's it's I'm sorry, but it's just crazy. And I'm glad the Department of Justice is getting involved, and I will keep you guys up on all the all the things that are going on with it. Now look, please let me know what you think in the comments. You know, do you, do you think it's okay for someone to want to charge you 6% of your home's value? If you have a $700,000 house, do you believe it's okay to charge somebody $42,000? And do you also think it's okay that you charge them $42,000 and the house sells in two days? Two days. You still want to pay that $42,000? Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. It just doesn't make a whole lot of sense. But let me know what you think in the comments. We're going to talk about this a lot more. But I, I want to move on to another subject and talk about something that you guys have told me you want to talk about. Okay, everybody's made a real big deal about this. I did a video about it on TikTok and got, I don't know, like eight and a half million views on this one TikTok. And, and it's just because I basically said that, you know, as a, as a man, you should be taking care of your own household. You should be doing it yourself, especially a, an early morning riser like, like me. I get all my stuff done early. I get the bathrooms cleaned up. I get dinner started. I get breakfast done. Uh, I get the floors cleaned. Uh, as you can hear, can you hear that? If you, if you listen real closely, you can hear the dishwasher running right now. <laughs> I literally have it running right now. And that takes a whole 10 minutes to fill up the dishwasher. I, I, I've gotten real good at it over the years. But I, I want you to understand, um, why would you want your wife or your girlfriend or whatever, why would you want your significant other doing chores that you can do easily and efficiently? As a matter of fact, I just got, uh, do you guys know the vacuum cleaner Be Life? Yeah, they literally wrote me a letter and said, we follow you. <laughs> you know, we hear that you uh, you do your own uh, vacuuming and, and laundry and everything else. We want to send you a free vacuum and let us know what you think of it. So <laughs> I never thought in a million years a vacuum company would be sending me a free vacuum, but I'm kind of excited about it. You know, as crazy as that sounds, I'm, I'm excited to get my free vacuum and try it out, you know, because... I do all the chores in my house. I don't want my wife doing any of the chores. Why would I do that to her? Why would I have her doing things I can very efficiently and quickly do in minutes? I want her focused on what makes her happy and this guy. Yeah, I want her focused on me and what makes her happy. What I don't want my wife doing is throwing away garbage, mopping up floors, doing vacuuming and stuff when I can do that in 10 to 15 minutes. So 
I get all my stuff done early in the morning. If I got something to do in the afternoon before my, my son gets home from school, like running the dishwasher, I go ahead and run the dishwasher and do, and do another load, load of laundry if I need to do that. And while he's not home, I get the floors all clean, all mopped up, and I'm good. So I kind of said that in my TikToks, and here I got 8 million views, but I, I wasn't trying to pander or anything. I just, I bought my first house when I was young, so I always did all my chores. And I just felt as a man, it was my responsibility to do those. I never thought about, I never, I never even dreamed of saying to my wife or my girlfriend, hey, now that you're in the house, how about you pick up half my chores? <laughs> I, I'm sorry. I just, I never thought of that. I never thought that would be even a good idea because that takes away from her doing what I want her to do. I would prefer that she do things that fulfill her, whether it's taking a class, learning to cook, uh, whatever it may be at the gym or looking out after me. Those are the things I want her doing. I don't want her taking out garbage. I don't want her doing chores. I don't want her doing laundry and cleaning up the kitchen. I can do that. Now, if she wants to cook or make a meal, absolutely. Go ahead. I'm not stopping you if you enjoy cooking. But no woman wants to do garbage. No woman wants to do laundry. At least not many, that's for sure. So, And they certainly don't want to pick up after you. I've heard from, I've heard, oh my gosh. I've heard so many comments from women saying, my man does that. If your man does absolutely nothing, put it in the comments, please. I want to hear from you. I want to hear from you. If Now, if he does nothing, if he pitches in and helps, okay, you know, you got to admit that's something. But if you're saying your man pretty much does nothing, I want to hear about it in the comments. And uh, yeah, I've got that free vacuum cleaner coming. And when it comes you and I are going to review it together. I'm, I'm going to put it together and everything else, and I'm going to use it right here on YouTube. And I'm going to tell you exactly what I think about it. And uh, I have to admit, I'm kind of excited to get a vacuum cleaner. Anyway, I just thought I'd mention that. Next topic. A lot of you guys are asking me about what I do for skincare. And in, until just recently, I had a very, very basic um, regimen because I wasn't really happy with the products that were available to me. Um, they just had too many chemicals, too much. And I have extremely sensitive skin because I think some of you know, uh, I've gone through two bouts of skin cancer. If you look at and when I turn my head, you can probably see the scar that goes all the way. Around. I took 70 stitches, 76 stitches to the face on this side, had a giant hole in my face because I had melanoma. And then I had to have chemo on my face. I had stitches here and right here, so, and I had to go through chemo a second time. So the, the, the face you see and the skin you see, it's all very soft to the touch, and it's very sensitive because of going through the chemo treatments. So somebody contacted me, and I'll go over all the information at another time, but she contacted me and she said, Drayton, have, have you considered pharmaceutical-grade products that don't contain all of the chemicals. And I was like, no one's even brought it up to me before. And she said, well, I would like to send you some stuff to try. And I think you're going to be amazed. And I said, well, I've got sensitive dry skin. So, and she goes, this is going to work perfectly for you. So I know I've literally gotten dozens of messages from you guys. You know, what do you do for your skincare? What do you do for your, I'm 60 years old. And, uh, my, I can see my face changing literally day by day because of these products. And, and, and I, I told her, I said, look, I'll use the stuff for six to eight weeks and then I'll review it and be totally honest. Uh, you know, I said, one thing I, you know, this is new for me to start reviewing products and stuff like that. And she's excited about my vacuum cleaner too. <laughs> I told her I'm getting a vacuum cleaner. I know I'm overly excited about that, right? But I told her, I said, this is new for me getting, you know, I'm a 60-year-old man. It's not like a bunch of companies write me and go, hey, Drayton, what do you think about, you know, they, they want kids promoting this stuff. I'm a 60-year-old guy. So 
I just thought it was nice, you know, that she cared enough, you know, because my skin and my face, I have to be extremely cautious. So I'm, I'm a few weeks into using this and I am ecstatic. But I told her, I said, I'll do it for six to eight weeks and then I'll tell people about it and I'll give an honest grade about it. But that's probably two, three weeks down the line. But I want you guys to know in advance. I'm very excited to tell you about this because I think, in, I think as you're, you'll probably see with me over the next few weeks, you'll see the changes in my face because I see the changes just from a couple of weeks. So that's it. That's the Dre way for the week uh, or, or for the day. I'm sorry. This is the Dre. That's the Dre way for the day. Uh, another show coming up tomorrow. This is episode two. I hope you stick along, uh, stick al along with me because episode three will be out tomorrow. And if you haven't seen episode one, yeah, painfully listen to my audio. I hope my audio is better in this one. If it's not, let me know, but I'm still trying to get better with everything. Thanks for sticking around. Please subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet. And just know that uh, I really appreciate you coming along and uh, have a wonderful day. And I'll see you. I'll see you tomorrow. If you don't see me tomorrow, you can join me on TikTok anytime.